With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you back to Indianapolis and the 2023 NFL Scouting Combine, where we get to visit with a lot of people. It's so much fun to talk to people from all over the media, all over the league. It's always great, however, to visit with our head coach, Mike Frabel, who was very relaxed in a conversation with us. He was. He was very calm, cool, and collected, but he also gave us a tremendous amount of insight. He had a lot of information to share, and one of the things that really was interesting to me were his conversations about what's been going on in the competition committee meetings. You can listen to all of that on the OTP. We have that entire interview there, and it's up right now. The official Titans podcast, you can get it at TennesseeTitans.com or wherever you get your podcast, known as the OTP. But for you right now, one of his first comments about the Titans' new running back coach and run game coordinator, former Broncos offensive coordinator Justin Outen, who's now a part of the Tennessee staff. Well, that was where the role was. That's where the opportunity was. I had made a decision about Tony and what I wanted to try to see there. Um, I had met with Charles. I wanted to try to find a way to add him. I met with Justin. Um, was was up front on what the role would be but also maybe what the vision would be just trying to add a bunch of really good coaches and people um, did that defensively as well at some spots so um, you know I want people to know that it was well thought out it was well planned it wasn't just something that I you know threw together uh, tried to you know and it's hard it's hard to get every person that you want an interview and you know it's it's hard to go from college or pro team to, to pro team and sometimes that movement uh, isn't as supported throughout the league because you can block a coach or they just they have an opportunity at the place that they've been for a few years. A lot of news from here Jalen Carter a defensive tackle out of Georgia is a guy talked about as a potential number one prospect but there is a warrant out for his arrest for reckless driving and racing and that's involved in a situation in Georgia where there was a fatal accident. Uh, not a good situation for Jalen Carter, you wouldn't think. Had a chance to talk to the Athletics' Dane Brugler about how he saw this for Jalen Carter and how it might affect his draft status, if at all. You know, it's it, a lot has been made of you know quote unquote character character concerns with him, and you know I've talked with scouts about it, and you know it, he's. It's the same. He's a young guy, you know. He there, there's certain times where Kirby had to ride him a little bit, sure. But I think you could say that about um, you know most of the younger players in this draft that are 20 years old, 21 years old. Now, you know, obviously this is a little bit different situation. We're talking about uh, away from the the field, away from uh, the football facility that. Uh, you know, is going to make teams maybe, you know, question the decision making. And this is where you just have to you do your homework and find out more about the player uh, and more about the person and understand is this, uh, you know, get more details. And so, you know, it's it, it does cloud things. There's no doubt. But, um, you know, I, th I don't think it's going to make teams say, oh, well, we're not going to draft them. It's just going to make them dig harder and, and get more information just to find out, OK, if we draft you because he's going to go somewhere in the top five picks. If we're going to draft you in the top five, can we trust you? Are you a guy that we're going to worry about when you leave the facility? They, they just need to be comfortable with the answers they get during the interview process. And that's why for Jalen Carter, this week and the rest of the draft process is going to be so big because it just comes down to the interviews and convincing teams, just selling himself and say, yeah, I, I'm someone you can rely on. And so an incident like this is going to make them question that, but he's going to have every opportunity to be in front of teams and really put his best foot forward. Today, players began talking at the NFL Combine. They go to podiums and speak in front of media groups that are, in most cases, larger than most have ever seen. Amy Wells, you, you sense the nervousness. Absolutely, you do. This is a big stage. This is a big job interview and kind of a strange way to interview for a job in front of a lot of reporters. So some guys really rise to the occasion some guys don't love it so much. I think Brian Breesey was one of the guys who rose to the occasion. The defensive tackle out of Clemson bouncing back in 2022 after a major knee injury in 2021. He's excited about the experience and excited about getting over that knee, moving on, and becoming a professional player. Yeah, I mean, it's a dream come true uh, to be here at the combine. I've been playing football since I was five years old. So uh, just to be out here with, you know, all the talent and, and seeing all, you know, these NFL teams out here is, is just a dream come true. Yeah, I mean, you know, football was my escape through through a lot of things. Having, um, you know, my teammates, my family, coaches, 
a lot of support all around me uh, was was definitely crucial during that time. Um, and, and, you know, just it, it motivated me just to, to, you know, push through and, and continue to go. The other part of the draft that's really fascinating to all of us right now, what are the Chicago Bears going to do at number one? There's a lot of options. They could go in a lot of different directions, and we're all waiting. The feeling is if they don't pick a quarterback, they will probably trade out of that number one spot and try to pile up some picks. Well, Jeff Joniak is the voice of the Chicago Bears, and he did admit that it was strong when Ryan Poles, the Bears GM, said that Justin Fields was that team's quarterback yesterday. He points out another reason that keeping Fields is important for the Bears. Uh, no, uh, Justin, I think if he would be not in the equation, the city might go crazy because he's the top athlete in the city right now. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he is. He's the most discussed uh everybody loves him and uh, there's still work to be done obviously dynamic runner still developing as a passer and that's a lot of stuff it's a lot of stuff mind everybody you can listen to the otp for a lot of our great interviews the newest one for this wednesday is posted right now the OTP available at TennesseeTitans.com or wherever you get your podcasts and we're asking you for a favor we want you to go to TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ and send us your questions for Jim Wyatt. That's right. The great Jim Wyatt will come on the OTP and do a live mailbag. You love his mailbags on Tuesdays and Fridays. We're going to hit him up with one where he has to go a little faster. Yep. This one's going to be a lot better because he's answering these questions in real time. We ask, he answers. There's no preparation for Jim Wyatt here. So TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ. That's where you want to go to submit those questions. Or you can send them to me on Twitter at TitansAmy, A-M-I-E. Thanks so much for joining us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. We'll see you tomorrow at 5.